Hey, we want to welcome you back to HC Daily, which is our daily devotions that we're running for 30 days. Yeah. It coincides with our weekend series called The Greatness in You. Yeah. And it's a study on the life of the Apostle Peter. So we've been having a really great time. And of course, it's been great. Yeah, once yeah, again, yeah. Jeff Forrester, yeah. pastor of uh, Heritage Church, Sterling Heights, myself as well. Uh, Chris Zarba, been there uh, for a year and a half, yay. And then also Tom Blount. It's Tom good to be Blount, with you guys. Yeah. Who is our pastor, lead pastor of our Emily City campus. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Hey, tell everybody where it's located at. Uh, up in Emily City, uh, north of, uh, on 53, north of Romeo. Then you got Elmont. Then you got Emily City. It's right, right at the crossroads, kind of like uh, I-69 and M-53. So that's where it's at. And when did the campus start? About uh, eight years ago. This will be nine years in mm-hmm. September or October. Yeah. And yeah. I've been there. Actually, we helped start it. And mm-hmm. then I uh, thought I was going to go help a church for two weeks. And I was there three and a half years. And then Jeff called me back and said, look, you got to come back. So that's, that's awesome. Right. It's been fun. Yeah. So the cool part is if you're vacationing up north or you want to go to another campus, uh, we, we coincide. It's the yeah. same exact series. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're ever up there, check it out. Yeah. But uh, he, he speaks there most of the time. Yeah. So the preaching's way better than down in Sterling Heights. Right? Oh, right. I would that's agree. Right. I would yeah. agree. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. No. <clears throat> well, uh, today we are reading from uh, Matthew chapter 17. So grab your Bible or open up your Version app and uh, follow along. Don't just listen, but follow along if you can, unless you're driving. If you're driving, keep your eyes on the road. But for everybody else, uh, <laughs> let's read along. Matthew chapter 17, we'll start in verse 24, Matthew 17, 24. So the Bible says, on their arrival in Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and asked him, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, Peter replied, and then he went into the house. But before he had a chance to speak, Jesus asked him, What do you think, Peter? Do kings tax their own people or the people they have conquered? And they tax the people they've conquered, Peter replied. Well then, Jesus said, the citizens are free. However, we don't want to offend them, so go down to the lake and throw in a line. Open the mouth of the first fish you catch and you'll find a a large silver coin. Take it and pay the tax for both of us. So you've got uh, here in this passage, Peter and Jesus and the rest of the disciples have come back to Capernaum. Now you remember, uh, Capernaum was kind of the, the, that was the city that Peter lived in, that his home was at. And uh, so when it talks about Peter going back into the house, that's Peter's house. Yeah. This is uh, kind of, Capernaum had become kind of the base of operations for Jesus and his disciples around the Sea of Galilee in the northern part of Israel. Um, so they would leave Capernaum, they'd go out, do ministry for a while and come back. And uh, there's probably a couple reasons for that. One, there's a big house there, a house big enough for Jesus, the 12 disciples, all of Peter's home. Uh, but also Peter had a business. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and we know his business is still going uh, at the end of Jesus' ministry. So he probably had to check in, make sure things were going well. We know he owned multiple boats and things. So uh, there's probably multiple reasons why they're back there. But I do think it's funny. Uh, he comes home, and the first thing that happens is a tax man shows up. Yeah. Hey, glad you're yeah, back yeah. in town. It's time to pay the bills, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he hits he hits Peter and uh, uh, Jesus up for his their taxes. taxes. Yeah. 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 I think one of the things I, I'd like to try to take away from this with your guys' help, it's interesting. A lot of people, you know, I don't want to pay taxes. You know, there's this kind of this respect in the authority yeah. thing going on here, I think. Yeah, most people might not realize this. The temple tax was an annual assessment of uh, the Jewish men and the support of the uh, the temple there in Exodus 30. You'll find that. Right. And personally, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't like paying taxes. Yeah, I've never met anyone that really likes to do that out of their hard earned money because because we all, uh, for the most part, work very, very hard. But when I think about this, I, I look at this from the standpoint, he had that phrase in there, the citizens are free. Well, don't we have rights? I mean, aren't we free from mm-hmm. this standpoint? But however, what Jesus does, Jesus says, well, well wait a minute. I, I kind of read with imagination. He's like, we don't really want to offend them, okay? I, I, we'll deal with this in a moment. He said, we don't want to offend them. Now, I, I don't know about you, but what do you think he really means here when he's talking about we don't want to offend them? Yeah, I think it's a good question. Um, one, it's this is what everybody's doing, right? Mm-hmm. This is it's legitimate that the government, er, in this situation, the temple can charge a tax. Mm-hmm. That's part of the law, and we want to participate as uh, good citizens in the in the community. And so we don't want to try to exempt ourselves from something that everybody right. else is doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think another thing too is <clears throat> what Jesus is doing and how he responds. Maybe a little bit uh, opposite of the way that they want him to respond. Mm. Because if you think about it, uh, you know, we, we already know that they wanted a, a leader or a, a ruler to sort of 
overthrow their oppression. Right. right? That's, they, that's what they really wanted. Yeah. And so here's Jesus submitting yeah. to taxes. And so when it comes down to this idea of should we pay tax, Jesus immediately yeah. submits. Yeah. And so it's interesting because, um, you know, Jesus does that, I think, on purpose because sometimes I think that a lot of us get in our heads like we want the God that we want. We want God to be a certain way, and they wanted Jesus to be this military ruler to lead them out of yeah, physical yeah. oppression. A revolutionary. A revolutionary, right, yeah, yeah. like a military leader. So sometimes I think we want the God we want, not the God who really is. Mm -hmm. But the God we yeah. really, you know, the God who really is is the God really that we need. Yeah, Jesus True. is saying, I didn't come to pick that fight. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we try to make Jesus, we try to make God, we try to make the Bible align with our political arguments rather than accepting who he is mm. and the cause and the purpose that he came for. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. We we can minor on the majors, or we can major on the minors, minors. and minor on the majors, yeah. right? And so I think Jesus is kind of hitting reset there and going, hey, we pay our taxes. It's not what I'm here to fight. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not here to fight that. So when I think about that, you guys bring up some good points because here Jesus, he is the king of kings. Mm -hmm. We know who he is. He yeah. is the son of God. But he's the king of kings. He doesn't know anybody nothing. Right. So how did he initiate in your lives? How did he demonstrate, give an example that maybe we should all do? We might think we're pretty big in our own rights, but Jesus, he says, hey, we don't want to offend them. So what I like about this is that I need to probably listen a little more to Jesus. Here the King of Kings is actually doing something different. He actually declares his kingship. When you think about this whole uh, thing, it, to me, this is a miracle. I, I don't know about you, but to me, he's, he's declaring his kingship and he's controlling what? The coin and the fish. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys could ever do that. But <laughs> so I, I think we ought to trust him here. If he can do that, I ought to listen to him, trust him. But the last thing I really try to pull away from this is his servanthood. Mm. He, he, he just humbles himself mm. as a servant. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. And to do that, he was a servant. So he's submitting to the authorities here. And so when I see that, I see that more as a, an obedience thing to Jesus, obeying the command, so to speak. And when I say that, some people don't, oh, obey command is that we're, uh, he's initiating our lives and I'm responding to that initiative. And so when I look at that, why would he do that? Why would he say that? Well, so that we don't offend them. Mm -hmm. What do you think about yeah, that? Yeah. yeah. No, I, well, I, I, I think that I think that it's a great example for us because, you know, to to have Jesus model that for us and say, I mean, think about it. This just is coming off of the Transfiguration, yeah. where he's on the mountain yeah. and, he, and his face shines like the sun. Yeah. Uh, this is after they've already declared that Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, so Jesus is, you know, already demonstrated himself to Peter mm -hmm. and others as who he really is. Yeah. And so, and so here by demonstrating this, as you said, being humble, uh, it's just a great model for us. And yeah. we're like, hey, this is what Jesus clearly has intended to do. Yeah, it's a huge teaching moment for for Peter once again, and and over and over and over, Jesus is refining Peter's worldview um, through the whole th yeah. thing, right? And yeah. that's what we keep looking at every almost every day is seeing how Jesus is establishing for Peter. This is really what the kingdom's about. This is right. what I'm about. This is who I am. This is who you are. He's setting Peter up for the rest of his life's ministry. So in this situation, um, Jesus sends Peter to go fishing, and first fish you catch, there's going to be a coin. Yeah. Uh, we know that that coin was what would be called a, a four drachma coin. That that would be essentially the equivalent of four days wages. Okay. Now, the temple tax was two days wage. So th there's a real hint here as to why Jesus did that. Uh, Jesus owed a tax and Peter owed a tax, but there were 12 other disciples. This is one of the things that indicates, and, and historically we've always known or believed this, Peter was the oldest of the disciples. And so um, the men had to pay taxes over 30, over the age of 30. So Jesus owed it. He was over 30. Peter owed it. Some people say, uh, some historians would say that they think Jesus was, ten, or Peter was 10 years older than Jesus. Okay. So Peter's 40 something, Jesus is 30 something, and none of the rest of the disciples owed any taxes. Okay. So when you look at the rest of the disciples following Jesus, they were young guys. Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, history says that John was the youngest. He probably was a teenager. Wow. So you've got a guy in his 40s. You've got a guy that's a teenager, and you've got all these other young men that weren't old enough to have to pay taxes yeah, yet. Yeah. And um, 
And so you got Jesus and, and Peter. So looking at Peter's life, I think that's why Jesus chose to use this illustration now mm. in his life is, hey, you owe taxes. Nobody likes paying taxes. Yeah. Peter, you got to do it. Yeah. He's a businessman. Who knows? You know, it wasn't uncommon back then. A lot of corruption, trying to find ways to get around paying taxes, right. whatever. And the tax man had to chase you down back then. You didn't just mail it in or fill it out online. Right, right. So um, Jesus sends him to go catch a fish. Well, that was what Peter did for a living anyways. Yeah. And so Jesus is saying, hey, listen, uh, when you do what I tell you to do, I'll keep providing for you in the normal way that you would be being provided for, the way that you take care of yourself. And in this situation, it wasn't the 99th fish he caught today. It was the first one. Right. So go do what you do. It, so you're serving me. You do what I tell you to do. Mm. And then uh, while you're serving me, uh, you know, you're a fisher of men. That's what Jesus mm -hmm. called him to be as a yeah. fisherman. Then the coin will be in the fish's mouth. When it comes time That's to good. take care of your bills, I'll provide for you in yeah. the very way that you normally would make money anyways. Yeah. Hey, just as a fun note, um, I went to two, uh, 2009, I went to Israel. And uh, <clears throat> one of the things we did was we had to take this old wooden boat out on the Sea of Galilee. And uh, and so as we're, you know, passing Capernaum on, on my left-hand side, there was a, a restaurant right off of the coast of the Sea of Galilee. And it still sits there today. And it's, and it's called St. Peter's Fish restaurant. Huh. And wow. so it's really interesting. So yes. after after our boat ride in the Sea of Galilee, we ended up uh, parking and then going in and then we got this uh, meal and everybody get, you know gets the fish. Why not, right? right? And so anyway, here's a picture of, of oh, the actual fish. plate that oh. they serve you. Wow. <clears throat> so they get this big, huge fish. You know, obviously it's the whole fish. Is that yours that you had? I, I took that right from uh, Google Images. <laughs> yeah. I took that myself, yeah. So um, so anyway, it, and of course, in this case, it has fries. I'm yeah. pretty sure. I love that. I love that Jesus is eating fries. Yeah. Right? That's, <laughs> that's fantastic. Not, not, sure, not sure he ate fries, but uh -huh. anyway, at this restaurant, they, they, they brought us all the fish, and then they actually had a coin in the mouth of the fish. Oh, that's cool. So they served it to us with wow. a coin, which was hilarious. Yeah, that's awesome. And of course, all of us, you know, yeah. you know in ministry, we're like, yeah, yeah. oh, How clever. So yeah. It's very clever. But it was very cool to see. Well, hey, Tom, I just want to go ahead and say this. So as, as we're looking at this passage, <clears throat> you know, th those who are listening and, you know, doing the daily devotional with us for HC Daily, what is the one thing, and if you could put it in one sentence, uh, how can I tune out and just think about this one thing for the rest of the day? What would you say in one sentence? Wow, that's tough. Uh, you know, he says we don't want to offend them. I, I think it's okay to grab a principle from here and lay aside our rights, but never lay aside the truth of the Word of God. Oh, right. Mm. You, you, sometimes you just, you submit, but I, I know you want one sentence, but it's just probably, there's times I need to lay aside my rights to reach people, but never lay aside the truth of the Word of God. Yeah, but before we started recording, you, you had actually talked about, there was another time where yeah. Peter comes and goes, why did you offend them? Yeah. Right? Jesus was declaring truth in that moment. Mm -hmm. He wasn't being offensive, but the truth was Yeah, that was, was in Matthew 15. Them. Yeah. Yeah, Matthew 15. So it's just like two chapters before this. Yeah. Yeah. But then, so Jesus isn't going around trying to be offensive, no. right? And so in this one, he's trying to get along. The Bible talks about that as much yeah. as possible, live peaceably with all That's men, good. right? So Jesus didn't have an offensive attitude, but there were times where the truth offended people. Was offensive. Right? And yeah. I think that's, it, that's what you're that's highlighting, big, right? Yeah, that's what you're I think so. Yeah. yeah. That's great. That's awesome. And very big distinction between the two. So, yeah, let's go ahead and wrap it up and let's pray. And uh, let's ask God to help us to carry this in our hearts. Yeah, Thanks. That's great. Well, Father, we're just incredibly grateful for today, and Lord, help us to uh, hear what you want us to hear, and then give us the courage to be able to respond and submit to those truths today. Lord, thank you for the example of, of Jesus mm -hmm. and of Peter and yeah. his response as well. So Lord, help us to carry this in our hearts for the rest of our days, uh, and, and especially today. So be with us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, we will see you hopefully next time on HC Daily, and uh, hopefully you'll tune in and you've been enjoying it as much as we have been. Yeah, it's great. Thanks.